All right, at this point, we got a general overview of the different Twitter uh, screens. Let's actually do something. Let's talk about, um, uh, very easily, about, let's say, Twitter asked us to follow all of these accounts, and I don't really want to follow them all. Let's talk about that. It's pretty easy to talk about. What we want to do is look at the screen where we've got all of those accounts that we're following. And notice we will always see that on the left side of the screen. On this section here, how many tweets we've got and the accounts that I'm following. That's what following means. It doesn't mean this is my following. No, it means these are who I am following. These are the accounts I'm following. So click there, click that number, and that'll show you your screen here where these are all of the accounts that at the beginning, this is what Google, uh, this is what Twitter recommended me to follow. So then I can easily then click, well, they do good work, but I don't really want to follow them anymore, click right there, unfollow. Easy. Unfollow. So that's found under the uh, the following. Once you get followers, you'll get also a new tab up here. Tweets following followers. And then you can see who is following you. I don't have any to show you how that looks like exactly, but in a moment when we do some interaction, perhaps I'll get some followers and I can fully show that to you. You can also do it this way. This is pretty useful. Let's say I don't want to I don't want to go over to this following screen. Let's go back to the home screen. We spend a lot of time there. The home screen. And let's say that this is my this is the content that it's coming out. Let's say, well, I followed this account long enough. They have not followed me back, so I'll unfollow them. That's, that's fine. You can do that. Uh, a tactic is follow accounts that are related to your uh, niche, and then a percentage of them will follow you back. There is a limit, and I forgot to look it up, but I believe it's 200 per day that you can follow, so you can't go on a follow spree and, and follow a thousand accounts. Twitter will think, this is a spam account. And it has happened in these classes that I teach that people tell me, I've been blocked from Twitter, why? And it's, well, you followed 300 accounts in 10 minutes. <laughs> and Twitter thinks you're a robot. So is that different than finding friends? No, that's very, uh, very similar uh, in that we are looking for those to connect with. So connecting with accounts, following accounts, uh, is a good tactic. There's a percentage that will follow you back. Like one of the clients that I uh, that I uh, that I that I manage, uh, a restaurant. Uh, there was an account, some some chef. They they followed our account, and we took a look at their account, and then we said, okay, we'll follow them back. Uh, we took a moment to vet their account, which I'll give you my tips about that in a moment. But at this point. I'm following these accounts, and let's say from this screen, I'm, I'm tired of the tweets of this particular account. So you can click on anyone's profile picture, the little avatar picture. It'll give you a profile summary. This that it shows you is the same thing, but just compressed when you're looking at your own account like this. All right? So you can get a preview of anyone's account by clicking on their profile. Profile summary, what it tells you are their statistics. How many tweets that they've published since they've created their account, not per day, but since they've created their account. How many Twitter accounts they are following, so they're paying attention to 178 Twitter accounts, and they've got 435,000 accounts following them. So when they tweet something, nearly half a million people are paying attention. And from this screen, I can easily click the unfollow button. I stop following them, so I won't see their tweets anymore. What's useful about this screen is when we look at getting more followers and such, is that um, here is where you can get a quick summary, a biography of, I think it's 160 characters or so. They give you a little bit more to talk about yourself. So it's a good idea to take that space to really say what you're about so you can get followers. We'll edit that in a moment. 
we want to connect our website. So maybe if people want to go directly to the company website, it'll be there, and a location. This screen will also show you here uh, HSS, HHS Gov is also followed by the CDC flu, the USDA food safety, Girls Health Gov, and 16 others. So that's another way to discover more accounts. If these accounts are following that account, it might behoove me to follow that account. This is how you can vet an account. If I get followed by some, uh, some company and I see that they've only got seven tweets and two followers, I probably don't want to follow them back. I want to follow accounts with substance. At the moment, we don't quite have substance. It's sort of a chicken or the egg thing in the beginning. I want to have substance so that people can follow me, but I want followers because what I tweet no one pays attention to. So we'll see how we can balance both. Furthermore, I get uh, a little preview of the recent tweets. Six minutes ago, they, uh, they tweeted this. Uh, during NCSAM, take a step towards staying safe online by getting strong, secure passwords. Yeah, that's useful. People have been getting their passwords hacked a lot recently. Maybe this, uh, this will be useful to me to read. Over here, don't hesitate. Get the flu vaccine. That was two hours ago. So you get a preview of recent tweets. If you want to see the full account, you go to full profile. And here you see all their tweets. So on any of the ones that you are following, click their profile to get a full view of their profile so we can look at some other things here. So again, we'll be able to edit our own profile so that we put our, our best foot forward. So here I'm looking at the uh, hhs.gov news and info from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And notice this has a little blue verified account symbol. Because as I said at the beginning, we can create an account and I can call it Hillary Clinton. And then when it gets to the part about choosing the username, I can do, uh, you know, Hill R. Clinton, right? I can make that name, that username that at name. But I'm not going to be the official Hillary Clinton because I won't have that verified account. This is how you can be sure that whoever you're following or interacting with is the official representative. The problem with this is that not everyone can get verified. I can't verify my own company. I'm, I'm too little. I can't, uh, you know, I, 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 as a personality perhaps, I cannot get it verified either. These verifications are usually reserved for big companies, news organizations, uh, famous people, so that you're not accidentally following the wrong Will Smith. It's got the little verification thing. So I don't know anyone personally that has a verification. We're all too little. We're not one of these big accounts that has half a million followers. So you're probably not going to be able to get a verified account. That's why you want to take advantage of writing your company name under the full name and having a good biography to show that you're the real representative. You're not that other Victor's Bakery. So we've seen that tweets are limited to 140 characters and you think that's pretty limiting, but um, pictures can be attached, video can be attached, sound can be attached attached usually via links. So taking a quick look at this Twitter account, for example, I see here, uh, as I read a moment ago, look, look, it doesn't tell you, it, it's not the full um, instructions of how to stay safe, it's a link to the article, to the blog post, to the product. So we'll see how to add links then those 140 characters are not so limiting because I can click the link and it'll take me to the full article with pictures and text and, and uh, comments and everything. Question? Okay, let me click on that link. So that particular, uh, that particular uh, paragraph is in that, is in that uh, link? Yes, this is a link to this article here. 
So you can take, and we'll see how to do it, you can take any link and attach it to a tweet. And then when people see the tweet, they'll have the link and they can click it to see the original. That's how you get across the limitation. That's how you get around the limitation. What about pictures? Pictures, we'll see how to do that. We can add a picture directly. We can upload a picture into Twitter, and it'll automatically put the picture there, kind of like how these pictures already show up like that. These are pictures. We'll see how to add pictures pretty easily. We'll be able to add pictures and video to our tweets. Is there a website that you know of that has just stock pictures that you could use as opposed yeah. to trying to figure out pictures that would be, I guess, open, produced? Yeah, there's, uh, there's um, one, one really good one. Uh, you can go to get stock photos and such, uh, you can go to wikimedia.org. You might have heard of Wikipedia, which is the encyclopedia where you can find everything about anything. But Wikimedia is a place where there is a lot of um, uh, free-to-use pictures and, and multimedia for you to add to your tweets or to your blogs and such. Wikimedia. You have to, you should, each, each piece of media should have below it what are its limitations, its contract and such. So it's, it's license. So you should see for the particular uh, media what it is before you use it. But here, uh, specifically, when you come to Wikimedia, then you go here to the Wikimedia Commons. So notice it says shared media repository. So Wikipedia is part of the larger wiki project. Wikipedia is the encyclopedia that anyone can add to and improve upon. And this, there's a whole family of wikis out there, such as Wikimedia Commons, where people can upload pictures that everyone can use. There's WikiQuote, where you can look up you know, the great quotes of literature, who said that, uh, various books that are open for you to use and uh, download and such, a dictionary, a wiktionary, news, etc. Wikimedia Commons is where you can go to get pictures. Alright, so... I'm going to go back to my home screen so I see all my content here. Um, notice now it says I've got one new follower. So uh, since I already went to the screen, I don't have the little red number anymore. But if you get any notifications, they'll show up here. And once I go to notifications, it tells you right here. Enviro Coding's USA Topology. Very cool. So then what I could do uh, when I get any interactions is I take a moment to see um, what I should I follow them or do some other interaction? And usually the way I do this is I go to the particular um, account and, and browse it a little bit. I see how active they are. 126 tweets, um, following followers, what they're actually tweeting. What I like to do is usually go, when I go to any account, I go to the pictures. I go to the, I can click on right here, 22 photos and videos, for example, and take a quick look at what pictures have been uploaded or videos, and then interact with those, interact with those particular, with that particular media. So let's say there's some sort of picture or tweet. What I can do is just like Google Plus and Facebook, you have the interactions. And I would say from lowest to highest, the lowest interaction is to simply give a like, because someone can give a like or a favorite and just move on. You've shown that you have some interest in the content that someone posted. So this tactic of getting followers is to interact with followers, potential followers. And one of them is with a favorite. It's the lowest level. The second... Uh, a higher level would be uh, a retweet that you like their content enough that you want to share it with your followers. 
Obviously, you want to share content related to your company, content that your followers would care about. So that's an even higher endorsement because you've actually taken their content and spread it out like if it was yours or that you endorsed it. Not that it says that you, not that you created it, but you've endorsed it. You've retweeted it. Reply is the next level where if you click on that, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make you're gonna put out a public tweet, but it's directed toward <coughs> whoever wrote it first. So E and Viro Codings. YouTube was also mentioned in the tweet. So the YouTube name is already there. Then the highest level. is the follow. That's the most you can do. The least you can do is a, is, is a favorite. The most you can do is the follow because now you've given them enough endorsement that you want to see, you want to be uh, kept informed of everything that they tweet. Now anything that is tweeted uh, from that account will show up on my home screen. <coughs> so you've got those forms of interaction, favorite, retweet, reply. And follow. Along those lines, like I said about um, interacting with the interactors, go to your timeline and and browse along through your tweets. And, and look out for any that have numbers below the tweet. I hope in the future they also put a number next to replies, because it doesn't show you replies until you click the tweet. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. This is showing here, for example, um, kiosk outfitted with basic medical instruments. High definition video links started taking patients. All right, so now you've got these robo-doctors that you just walk up to like a vending machine and it'll diagnose you. <laughs> and so this has got 11 retweets and four favorites. And I hope in the future they add a number next to replies because I'd like to know who's replying. You can see that once you actually click the tweet, uh, like anywhere in the gray area or where it says view summary, that'll then show you the tweet itself And then the retweets and favorites. And if if in, if there were replies, they would be they would be attached right below this tweet. The reason I care about the numbers is again, these Twitter accounts probably interacted with that Twitter account for a reason because they follow that account. They care what they've tweeted. And if I'm following that account, most likely I followed an account that I care about, something about baking or cooking or whatever. So actually, let me. Let me actually, just to kind of show you what I really... Let me show you what I really want to show you here. Okay, so let's say I'm following the Four Seasons magazine and they're about, they maybe tweeted something that I would care about. I'm paying attention to these little numbers here because if I, if I view the tweet, I might have um, Twitter accounts that are interacting with the original tweet. What I could do is do a reply 
to the Twitter account that replied to the previous Twitter account. So this is the part of, of uh, social media that, that takes a moment that you have to you have to uh, spend a little time. Like I'm looking at some of these and I don't see any replies, uh, but I do see that people retweeted and favorited. And what I could do is, if you hover over any of these accounts, again you can click on an account, get a quick preview. Okay. Hillary Novo Sedlik, 4,000 tweets, 194 following, 208 followers. And then I can follow, reply, interact. So I do this for I do this for clients on a regular basis that we've connected to various uh, accounts related to what they're selling or what their business is, and then I go in and start to reply or favorite or retweet random people, but obviously related to what the company is. I'm not I'm not just not just going to blindly click retweet. I'm going to retweet something related to the company or reply to someone. Let's say a food company, uh, a food client, and uh, someone was uh, looking for some tacos. So we start to we strike up a conversation with that person about tacos. We sell tacos, and then maybe they maybe the the, the follow happens. So ultimately, you want those follows. Victor, do you view Twitter as a as a, a, a branding platform, not so much a call to action sales platform like a Google Plus or Facebook? I mean, I've never seen a coupon on Twitter. You know, are they out there? Yeah, definitely. But I see that much more with the big companies. Uh, with bigger companies, you're you're going to see that much more, and they're trying to spread that out to regular people as well. So I use it as both, definitely. I use it as a place, but that's the chicken or the egg thing. If I've only got 12 followers and I'm putting out coupons, no one's going to pay attention to that. But once I've got maybe 100 followers, then it would behoove me to put more coupons out there. But um, I've got to build a brand awareness, and that's what, that's what this phase is here. I'm going here. There's a bunch of people that are replying to this particular uh, tweet, the world's greatest fears mapped by country. Not exactly related to my company, but I'm just showing you that a lot of retweets, a lot of favorites happen, a lot of people are talking. Therefore, I can start to reply, like, this one's interesting. She turned it around. And what are the world's greatest joys? So then I can reply to that, and then I can say something like, a good cookie helps. And so, okay, my... I'm not selling them anything. I'm just putting my name, I'm just putting myself into the conversation. I've interacted with someone that was interacting, and um, hopefully, then I'll keep an eye out for my notifications here and I'll get some reply from them or a favor or, or a follow. So, can you figure about 100 people before your brand? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lay it down with an, with an exact number. That was just a, a number. Uh, it really depends on your company, what you're trying to sell, how big are you, all of that. It's up to you. This is one of the intangible things about any social media that I, I can't give exact numbers at. You know that once you've got 100 followers, do this. Um, you could be, in the beginning anyway, you might have 12 followers, but those, but eight of them are really passionate and they do follow the coupons. So you're going to do both. You're going to be looking for new followers and putting out content. And uh, something's gonna stick. So you probably do more followers. 
At the beginning, definitely. At the beginning, you're probably your ratio of following and followers is probably going to be pretty skewed. Uh, you're going to be following, let's say, 75 accounts, and you've got six followers, and that's fine. Eventually, as you as you get more followers and such, you can go in and prune it. Right, you're you're following accounts that never followed you back. So then unfollow. Yes. What's that? <coughs> Go ahead. Exactly. Exactly. So what happened here? I'm not following them. Twitter is public by default. So when I did that reply, Kavita, what she got up on her notifications window was a notification that said Victor's Bakery replied to you. So we're not following each other. But that's the difference between um, between uh, Twitter and Facebook, where on Facebook it's much more about a one-to-one -one relationship where I have a connection with a friend from high school. You know, someone followed or someone asked to become my friend, we became friends, we have that connection. If I break the connection, then we're no longer connected. But on Twitter and Google+, it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one relationship. It can be a one-to-many relationship. So any people can follow me and I can follow none of them, or one of them, or all of them. So unless this person blocked my account, they would see that they would see that message. That's different from the direct message in that what I published is public. Notice back on my timeline, everyone in the world can see that now. It's been directed to her, but everyone in the world can see it. So let me show you an example here, because that's a little, to get your head around that, who's seeing this? That's a good question, but let's look at this. Let's go to twitter.com slash, and we'll go look at uh, one of my clients. We'll go to, well, we'll go to my company first. We'll go to PMD Interactive, that barely fit inside the name, PMD Interactive. Again, spelling capitalization doesn't matter, but it's, it's a little more readable to actually spell it like this because then you see the words and this and the um, pronunciation of it but lowercase uppercase does not matter let's go to my company for a moment twitter.com slash PMD interactive press enter and what you'll see first is well of course our branding and all of that biography will we've still to edit that we'll do that very soon uh, at the top here we've got tweets tweets and replies photos and video so under tweets these are the latest tweets we've made. Five hours ago, we tweeted, we tweeted this: "Pitch perfect. Nine do's and six don'ts of great presentations." That was five hours ago. It's got a picture and a link. We'll see how to do that. Then we tweeted this uh, on the 18th. We don't play around. Terminations. Hashtag. So these tweets are directed basically to the world to the public at large. They're not directed to anyone in particular. To see those, we've got tweets and replies. Click that, and then you'll see a few more tweets that didn't show up a moment ago specifically to companies that we have mentioned in our tweet. We'll see how to do that in a moment. We've directed this tweet to that company, Brand Graphics. If you scroll down, you'll see them here and there. Damien Franco, for example. This one didn't show up a moment ago. Neither did this one to at real Seth Horace. These tweets were directed to those people. They're still public. Anyone can see them. But they were directed to a particular account. Victor? Yes. Yes. At the very top right, you always have the ability to tweet. And once you tweet, like when we did earlier, we said, this is my first tweet. That was sent to the whole world. We've always got the ability on the top right corner to tweet. And this is going to be sent to the world. To your followers, we don't have any. I don't have any, just one. So all my one followers will see that and the whole world. If, if I sent it to, this is to the public. So my followers would see this tweet. 
on their home screen, and anyone that stumbles across my profile would see it too. But whenever I go to any place here and select reply, that's public, the whole world can see it, but it's directed to this profile, and if the whole world wanted to see it, they would have to go to my profile and turn on view tweets and replies. The default is tweets. Only the tweets that are public to the world will be visible, but if you want to see everything that they've tweeted, tweets and replies. Why would you turn that on? Yeah. Well, again, earlier... Oh, where? Well, you click on it. Right there. Tweets and replies. No, my page, where I don't have this, because I have no replies, that's why? Yeah, you don't have any, so uh, it doesn't show up there. But you'd usually do this when you go to someone else's profile. Oh. So this is a good case right here. Uh, what I said earlier, I hope they change this. We have, uh, where did it go? There was one about, oh, here it is. Which one makes you happy? So that tweet looks like it has no interactions. But it does. There's replies going on here. I don't know why they don't have, at some point put a number there, because if you actually view the tweet, you can click on the tweet or click on its date or time. It'll focus on the tweet. And here, this is the reply that was going on. So Brand Graphics tweeted to us. And so this was a conversation that we were having back and forth, public, anyone can join it. This is one of the reasons why. These are real accounts having a real conversation. If it relates to your company, get in on the conversation. If it were a private account, it would be done privately. So if it's public, get in on the conversation. Yes? If you say something public, unless I follow you, I won't be able to see it. No. Um, we'll say that one more time. When you, pop, when you tweet something, mm -hmm. if I'm not following you, I won't be able to see it unless I know your profile. Yes, uh, exactly. If you know my profile, you can always go to my profile and see what I tweeted. You don't have to follow me. But if you follow me, whatever I tweet would show up on the home screen, your home screen. So that's how you can keep track of what we're doing. I notice also in your uh, at your home screen you can say uh, support success to innovate uh, web solutions such as then you have hashtags web design hashtag development hashtag social media mm -hmm. so if we go to those hashtags in social media you put a post in that's going to show up on your social media heading, right yes that's like when we were looking at hashtags and searching in um, in Google Plus we added a hashtag or a keyword to a tweet. And then now all of those tweets are connected together with that keyword. And the thing is that when we write our biography in a moment, we'll be able to do that too. We'll be able to add keywords, hashtags, to our biography so that we're linked to other like-minded Twitter accounts. And, and with Twitter, that's important because of the limitation of the number of characters you have, right? Yes, and it also builds the community uh, so that other people that are interested in social media, if they search for hashtag social media, or if they click from somewhere social media, this account would, might show up, and then they follow it. So those hashtags are created by you, mm -hmm. and you just, like, like you said, hashtag how to, like he's talking about that, that's just a listing where people would see hashtag how to, and then they just go to that, and that's how they or yeah, and we'll see that in detail, but uh, hashtag how to is now showing me all the tweets that are um, that are having that keyword. Okay. So how to. Seven tips for conserving water in your home from drought resistant plants to hardscaping. So they hashtag it how to, and if other people are looking for how to, they would find it. So right here I can give a favorite. Okay, so when they're saying that hashtag on TV, hashtag whatever, 
you just follow that list that's not your own. It's just that's, that's what, how they get a list. Right? This is that. how you can find others that are tweeting about the same thing. Okay. So yeah, on the news, on TV shows, soap operas, everywhere, they're all using hashtag something. So we'll see how to do that in a moment, okay. that we search a hashtag and we're seeing what everyone is talking about, okay. and I can get in on the conversation. But that's not tweeting, it's just... No, it is tweeting. Okay. We're seeing tweets with that hashtag, and then we can tweet about that hashtag as well. Yeah, I got confused about which one's which. Yeah, as we do it a few more times, it'll make more sense. But before we go further, again, this is the, the chicken or the egg thing. Okay, I'm going to try to follow accounts, and hopefully I get some follow-backs. But I might not get follow-backs because I know that what I do is I go to a particular account, and I check them out for a moment. Are they legitimate? Are they a spam bot? Do they tweet stuff? Do they tweet relevant stuff? Do they tweet two people? I like to check tweets and replies because I don't like to follow accounts that never interact with people because they'll never interact with me. What's the point? So this one is putting out a lot of great content, I don't see any replies. So remember, I believe I said it in this class, there's a monologue and a dialogue in social media. Are you just going to talk out to the world monologue? Or are you going to talk back and forth with your followers and such? Dialogue. So this account, I like that, they've, that they're publishing a lot of this good stuff, but I'm never going to get a reply, I'm not going to get a retweet, they're doing a monologue. There's one reply here out of like 40 that I've 40 tweets I've seen so far. But that's why I take a look at an account before I click follow. So that's what people are gonna do with you. If you just created your account today, you're still a basic account. You're you're still a little egg. You don't have your, your profile picture and such. So we wanna create, we wanna set up our profile a bit more so that if someone checks out our, our account, there's a little incentive to follow us. So let's take a, let's talk a little about that. Uh, we'll go back to the home screen, and then click on your name to go to your profile. So we'll go back to your profile, your Twitter address, and click Edit Profile, right there. Edit profile. So under edit profile, we have a few spots right here that you want to fill out. You have a biography, and again, you're limited to a few characters. Um, take advantage of this to write something enticing. Under bio, I'm going to write San Diego's premier. Uh, family owned, you know, whatever you might have already had on Google Plus, keep it consistent or, or write something different for this platform, it's up to you. I would recommend keep it consistent. So, whatever yours is here, San Diego's premier family owned uh, bakery since 1895. Location this actually um, is. Uh, can be a real location or something a little more nebulous because, for example, I, I think CNN or Fox News or whatever, uh, it says the location is USA. So it's not a real, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, 1324 uh, Lane Street. You know, it doesn't have to be an actual physical location. Uh, it can be, for example, just simply San Diego. Or it can be California. All right, or anything you want, even the earth. That can be anything. There's no limitation there. But I would recommend a real location if you are a real location. Website, well, you put your website address there. You can change the basic theme color of your of your uh, of your Twitter page, you've got a few built-in colors. Or if you know your own color code, HTML color code, you can write that in. 
And then at the right side, don't forget to save changes. So this is something minimal to do, but very important because you don't want this basic newbie account where no one is going to follow you. Another thing that we'll do, I'll show you how, but you probably don't have a picture handy. You want a, a picture here and a picture up there. There's the cover picture and then there's the avatar. So you can click on that camera picture and now you can add a picture on top here or on the side here. And upload a photo. You can do this if you want, but you probably want to do this with your real picture. There's some pictures on these computers that I'm going to borrow. Actually, let me see. I'm going to get the koala as our avatar. And then I'm going to get this desert as our background. And notice you can you can move it around a bit because you, you have that amount of space but you're not going to be able to see the whole picture. You can zoom in, zoom out. Um, is naming your picture beneficial here or not necessarily? Not really. Okay. This is a, a picture that most people will never access kind of like a, a, in contrast to a picture on your website. On a picture on your website, you do want good names on your on your picture names, but here no one's really going to see that name. What about Google Plus? Is it important to name them? I'm naming them, but... I usually do, but I don't think it's... I don't believe I've read anything about that on social media. I know for your website that, yes, name your picture something meaningful, but I usually do anyway. So make sure you click Save Changes, and then now my profile is not the generic profile anymore. Uh, my profile is not the little egg anymore. If you refresh now, I've got an actual little bit of character there. So obviously I want to put my company picture there, some sort of picture that defines my company on the cover picture. And now when people come, up, come to my profile, they might actually um, follow. Okay, so let's say we've got an account set up more or less. This can be, oh, this always can be changed, of course. Um, we've solved one half of the chicken or the egg problem. We've got a profile that people could possibly follow now because it's not the generic one. The other part of that, okay, let's try to get some followers. So uh, this is where our search comes in. At the top right, we always have the basic search here. We'll explore that one first. So whatever you've done here, make sure you save it. And then on the top right search here, you can search for uh, hashtags or, or, or phrases or whatever. But let's say I'm trying to look for cookie recipes. So I'm just going to start typing. Notice as I start typing, Twitter says, well, do you mean cookie run, cookie and tea, cookie butter, cookie dough? So I can select any of those. Notice it might also select I might also preview for you accounts that have cookie somewhere in their name, either the full name, which is not the unique one, or the username, which is the unique one. So this person is called Cookie, but actually Calvin Cookie. They couldn't get Cookie. Oreo Cookie shows up as well as at Oreo. Ally shows up here, but they've got five seconds of cookies. Anyway, I'm going to ignore all that. I'll get back to it, but I'll keep typing cookie recipes. I'll type cookie recipes. I'll ignore what's there. Cookie recipes. 
And what shows up is then a page of results. And you might have already run into a couple of these things before. Do you, do you not notice any of these tweets that say, promoted? <coughs> now, I'm looking for cookies, and instead I get this glorious thing. The chicken waffletta. Well, this is a promoted tweet. And that's where a lot of things online are going, search and social media. Because everyone's on social media, everyone's getting on social media, everyone's getting searched. How do you <coughs> get a leg up? You pay for it. Uh, you can run promoted campaigns where your tweet, for a price, you can get it in front of more potential customers. You can target it so that these particular demographics will see this tweet. Again, we're going to focus on all of the free things we can do in social media. And I might touch on the paid stuff, but there's enough for us to learn about free stuff before getting into paid. But anyway, this promoted tweet appeared here. Mazetta tweeted this October 6th. We deliver, we believe in sharing joy. We pour our hearts into what we do so we can share the best in the world in all its richness and color. Share the joy. I don't like that bio because that could apply to house paint. That could apply to portrait photography. How does that apply directly to food? These people seem to be about food. So while their, I think their bio here is written very well by committee. I don't think it's written very well as, what do you really do? I can take that out and put it to any brand, any product. Everyone will apply to that. Toilet bowl cleaners. It makes me happy to have a clean toilet. right? I pour my heart into it, and I share when I have a clean toilet. So whatever bio here, focus it really on what you're about and let people know. I can kind of tell what they're about because they've got a picture of their products. If I've never seen their logo before, I still don't know what they do, but their cover picture back here tells me, okay, they're about food. Italian food, I suppose? Because this bio is not a good bio. In my opinion. But anyway, this gets us back to once in a while, you'll be getting promoted tweets. You can either... Uh, uh, you've got several things you can do, of course. Reply, retweet, favorite and doesn't show up until you hover over, dismiss. Get that ad out of here. You see that with ads, with promoted content. But what's cool about promoted content that you can take advantage of is that if you, if you click on the tweet, usually I click on the, the time of the tweet. It's at the top here. Click on the time of the tweet. The screen changes to focus just on that tweet. And what's cool oftentimes about promoted tweets is that people reply or favorite, or retweet. And therefore, I can start interacting with these people. Dorothy. Free thinker, entrepreneur, all music, photography. 16,000 tweets, 2,600 followers. So then, I, I again, I, I might go to the full profile and see, yeah, they're an interesting person. They're relating to what I'm tweeting about. I'll follow them. Maybe not follow them. Maybe I'll reply to them. Maybe I'll reply. Maybe retweet something. There's different levels of, of interaction. <clears throat> so search and you'll get content from famous accounts, not famous accounts, everything in between. You'll get updated search here, nine new tweets. Click that and more stuff just came out eight minutes ago. A recipe for cookie dough ice cream. So notice this tweet has a link and a bunch of hashtags. My recommendation is keep your hashtags below three, just like Google+. Too many hashtags, it's starting to look a little like spam. I would recommend if you can do this in one hashtag, that's fine. Two hashtags is okay. Three is the limit, what I would recommend. Four, like here, I'm not quite trusting this, especially when they don't spell correctly. Remember, you can't edit tweets. Make sure you send them out the right way the first time.
So Hannah Healy says, this is one of my favorite super simple paleo dessert recipes. You can see more on my blog by searching cookie, and then a link to her Facebook. So I'm going to favorite that. I'm going to take a quick look at her profile. I would go in and view more of the profile, but just to show you, let's say I did 17 minutes ago. I'm going to reply. And when I reply here, again, this will be public. Anyone can see it if they choose to. But the person that will see it by default is Hannah Healy. I'm going to reply. I'm going to say, uh, great recipe. I'm going to assume I, I read it also. Great recipe. Can't wait to try it. How long have you been into paleo? So I'm going to add a hashtag. Just like Google+, Plus, I can add hashtags, keywords, that define what the tweet is about and connect it with every other tweet that has that hashtag. Unlike Google+, it does not automatically hashtag for me. We have to manually type hashtags, and that's simply the, 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 the number symbol, the hash mark. And I start typing the hashtag, paleo, and it might suggest other hashtags. That's the one I want comes a different color because now it's an it's an active link. How long have you been into paleo? And again, when we talk about Google Plus, many of the things that we talked about there apply here too. Use hashtags, ask questions, post pictures. So I'm doing that here. I'm putting a, a hashtag. I'm asking a question. We'll look at adding pictures in a moment. And yeah, talking to random strangers. But hopefully I've taken a moment to see, are they worthy of being interacted with, or are they spam bots, or are they real? Let's say tweet. And now Hannah got a little red number up on her notification, or maybe an alert on her phone, and hopefully replies, or favorites, or follows. So what I want to do is follow the rabbit hole of paleo, actually. Click there, and that'll start to give me all of these recipe, recipes about the paleo diet. Back on my, uh, on my home, it shows that that's what I've tweeted. It's an active link, so if anyone is right now searching paleo, you guys can try it actually. Go up to your search on the top right and search pound paleo and, and look around there and see if you see my little koala, Victor's Bakery account. When you do that search, any search, at the top you will see show me top results. So the results that are getting the most activity or show me all results that are happening. So if you don't see mine, perhaps turn on all, wait a moment, and then it'll, it'll update. But search gives us the ability to find stuff. And on the left side, we've got show me everything related to that hashtag. Or people, usually that's specifically if they've got a hashtag in the username or somewhere in their name, so paleo hacks. Paleo Treats, and it shows their biography, the fastest growing community of paleo enthusiasts on the interweb. So if, if you put some of those hashtags, some of those keywords in your bio, and people search them and go to people, they could find you. Any photos and videos that have that keyword. <coughs> The latest will show up eventually at the top. Yes, uh, it might not show up just yet uh, because, you know, there's millions of tweets going out. So this one just came in here, but I'm sure if you, if you keep it on the screen for a moment, it'll say one new tweet and probably mine will show up eventually. Or it might not show up because I haven't confirmed my account. Notice it keeps nagging me at the top, confirm your account, so I have to look it up to see if if that's any limitation here, but 
Uh, normally, yeah, when you start to add hashtags, you'll start showing up on search. Nope. If I tweet to San Diego Magazine, only my followers could potentially see it, not the followers of San Diego Magazine. But you could go to San Diego Magazine's profile and look at who's tweeting on that and, and, and connect with them from that. Right. Exactly. So that's that's piggybacking on these different things we've been talking about. Exactly. So if I, I follow San Diego Magazine, I'll go to their profile and I'll take a look. Are, are there any tweets related to my uh, account? Usually the fastest way to answer that is look at the pictures. So I see some sort of food picture there. That might be tangentially related to mine. So I'm going to go to that particular picture. No replies, but if there were, I would reply to them. But I do see people that favorited. I can go to those favorites and see, okay, Promo Ventures, Lisa Waters, Diz. Go to that account. This account seems to not be that useful. They pretty much seem to be repurposing content all the time. So they're doing 80-20, but 80% 80 all repurposed content. So I wouldn't really deal with that account. Um, yeah, maybe they might retweet my stuff, but to all uh, 57 followers. No, your email is not visible, but uh, if you if you search uh, a person's email, you could find them, unless they made the setting change, unless they change their setting. So by default, I believe, I believe it does let you search people's emails too. And the is global. Yes. It's it's global, it's multilingual. <clears throat> people can write it in, in, in their own language, create their accounts in, in any language. You can see people's um, tweets from any language. Uh, it's all connected. Twenty four hours a day. Okay, well, let's focus a little bit on adding our own content. Let's talk about the nuances of tweeting. Let's go back to your home screen so that we're all looking at the same thing. Back to your home screen. It's always available at the top right, but I'll show it to you here also. Back on your home screen, Compose new tweet, click there. And we've got a little box here to start writing with a counter. 140 characters is the maximum. So we'll say, um, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to say, we've got a new recipe for chocolate chip cookies on our blog. We think you'll love them and make them tonight. So to add a link, if I know the link, I can start typing it. HTTP colon slash slash Victor's Bakery. Notice the numbers are going down. Dot com slash blog slash recipe. So let's say I know the address. I can just type it in. Usually that's not the case. You don't have your, your, you don't have your link rest, uh, memorized. So any 
any link that you can get from your web browser, you can copy from the web browser and paste it to your tweet. I'm going to show you here. I'm going to go to my website and the blog, and I'm just going to take any, any link there. I'm going to say this password thing that we did here. So any link up on the address bar, even this huge one right here, I can copy it and paste it into Twitter because Twitter has implemented a link shortening system. Because in the beginning, all the letters of your link counted toward your, your limit. So that right there already looks like it's 100 characters long. And I've barely got any more space for my tweet. But what Twitter does is it takes any address, no matter how long it is, and automatically shrinks it down to, I think, 15 characters. So a link is still going to take up space, but they will all take up 15 characters at the most. I'm going to copy that link. Just right-click copy. Back to my tweet. Right-click paste. So notice, even though that's a lot of characters, it still only took up about 15 or, or whatever their, their number is. And then I'm down to six. Is that six over? Uh, no, when it's over, it'll be negative. And red about that I've gone over. So the number gets redder until you get to the end, and then once you get past the end, and again, spaces count, so these empty spaces of nothing are counting. And when you go over, you cannot tweet anymore. As long as, you're, as long as you're within 140, as long as you're within 140, when you paste your link, it'll work. So this is a text link. Uh, this is a text tweet with a link. Uh, there's different types of tweets. The ones that I recommend are some sort of text to some sort of link, because that's the, the point of all of this. This is your marketing. This is like sending out something in the mailbox to your mailbox. People get the mail, and then they do something with it. Here I've tweeted something. It didn't cost me anything, uh, and I'm putting a link over to this blog post, this product, this coupon, whatever. So I'll tweet, and I'll, all of my two followers, if you go to your home screens, will see this. So then, uh, just for the experiment, can you click a favorite on that? So eventually then I'll get a little number up here, a notification that, there it is right there, see? I got a number right there. Some interaction happened. Can't wait to see. So I'll go to notifications, and it says right here, MMSync favorited your tweet. So dealing with these notifications is important because these are oftentimes people that are interacting with your account for some reason. If they favorited your tweet, re retweeted you, replied to you, followed you, take a moment to see how does that, you know, and this is obviously, this sounds pretty Machiavellian, but how does it benefit you? Well, I'm going to follow an account that is related to what I'm tweeting about. They might care what I'm tweeting about. I'm selling baby carriages and I'm going to follow these new these new mothers that just had babies because they're tweeting about their cute pictures of their cute kids. So I follow those expectant mothers and perhaps they follow me and perhaps I make a sale. And so I've tweeted out a, a, a tweet with some uh, text content. And then um, we can add a, a picture <coughs> to our tweets as well. Notice there's a little picture icon right there. You can add multiple pictures, actually, but each picture also takes up some amount of space on your tweet. So I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to make another tweet. 
Uh, if you want to, you can, but you probably don't have a picture to share, although you can delete the tweet if you want. I'm going to click the little photo, and um, I'm going to use that same koala picture. You notice, it was... Um, I had 140 characters, I just added a tweet, and I've got 117 left. So, 23 characters is what it took to attach this picture to my tweet. And add another one. Still 117. And another one. Still 117. So yeah, it does take 23 characters. That's a lot for such a small space. But you can attach multiple pictures. I'm not sure if there's a limit. I usually don't attach so many. Um, two at the maximum, I would say. Um, it looks like four. I can't attach more than five. Five. But you can attach up to four pictures, and they will they will all take the same 23 characters. So it's just a matter of clicking that little attach picture. And here I can say something like, Meet Kyle the Koala, our mascot. His favorite cookie is a <laughs> so the kind of content you can post are links, questions, pictures. I'm gonna add a hashtag also. Um, a hashtag, you know, hashtag, and then I can also look down here. These are the current trends. Are there any hashtags that are trending that I might want to jump on the wagon bandwagon with? Uh, nothing really. Actually, here, Emma, biggest fan, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber is always hot on Twitter. And if you can jump on that bandwagon, why not? So I'm going to jump on that bandwagon. Emma, biggest. You have to be very careful about this because, again, you're going to jump on a bandwagon and you want to make sure that it relates. This one really doesn't. But I'm just showing you that I at, the, at this particular moment, I, I found a trend here that I could jump on. And a real-world example over for this other client, twitter.com slash aki estexcoco, they're a, a, a restaurant, if you spell it right, texcoco. Uh, they're a restaurant, Mexican food, one of the, one of the, the things that they sell uh, is, is homemade flan, this uh, custard. And recently there was a um, hashtag going around going, ruin a dessert. So people were just tweeting funny things about d ruined desserts, like, you know, sand in my pie or, or something. So I got in on this and I, and I said, um, there's no way to ruin this dessert when, you're in when we're involved. And I'm like, Don't ruin a dessert. So then I got a few replies and retweets, and people got in on the conversation. That's what the hashtags are supposed to do, facilitate <coughs> connections, conversation, exposure. And when I checked the stats very recently, there were like five or six new uh, follows to this account in one day. So back to what I'm writing here, this is not exactly what I would recommend about using any hashtag just because it's hot. That gets a little spammy. But just for fun and to show you, I'm going to tweet that and put the hashtag. And maybe one of these Justin Bieber fans will see that koala and click a favorite. Just to show you that people are looking at those hashtags and, um, and, and people are connecting. So always keep an eye out on your notifications. That's why I keep a tab open on the side, and a number shows up, so I can always see the number up there. You've got the number on the top here also, but then I don't want to lose my place in what I'm doing here, so I, I keep a separate tab open. And that's simply just right-clicking, open a new tab or new window. I got a notification here, and so it 
it lit up here, I got a notification, and then what I could do is reply, retweet, favorite. I'm going to do reply. Another notification came in, I'm pretty popular. <laughs> and uh, so... No, uh, I got a yeah. I, I I got a notification on the tweet I just sent right here about Kyle. Let's pull. And back on my home screen, it's gonna show you perhaps, you know, the tweets that are connected. First, I tweeted this. There was a reply, and then there was a reply to the reply. notifications. That's why I keep a tab open so I can see the number right there. Let's say we want to add a video. So let's let's try this. Let's go Let's go to um Many, many times any video uh, sharing service, just about every website nowadays, has these social media sharing buttons. So you would use them, for example, to share video. Uh, we can do YouTube and other platforms, but you, here, let me show you a platform that you might not have heard about before. This one is called, let's check this one out, HTTP colon uh, Vimeo.com. And just so we can look at something tangible, we'll go to my account, VM Campos. This is not related to any of my companies. This is my own hobby, personal stuff. This is another video sharing site. The thing about Vimeo that it tries to be different than YouTube in that, in a good way, it's a little bit more snobbish, in that anyone can post anything to YouTube, and people do. You see really bad, grainy videos about stuff and just kind of slapdash content. Vimeo tries to pride itself to be a little bit more upper upscale in that they highly recommend every step of the way that when you create content for Vimeo, you make it a little bit more professional. Put some good music on it. Check your spelling. You know, that sort of thing. So they don't have the billions of views or whatever that, that YouTube has, and the millions of videos, but there's a lot of great videos, high-quality videos on Vimeo. And over on YouTube, I've got like 100 videos on my personal channel, and here I've only got 13. I'm crafting those a little bit more. And what the main thing about my channel here is that I, I, I'm a comic book collector. I've been for a while. And every once in a while, I run into some really interesting covers of comics, and I do a little short one-minute video about cool comic book covers. So the latest one, just in time for Halloween, don't play it in class, because it's not safe for work. It's got a little bit of bad language in it, and zombies. But um, if I wanted to share this, any of these videos, from here or YouTube or Facebook or most places, there's usually a, a sharing button. So I'm going to go to this one over here, Johnny Quest. And on the video itself, depending on the network, there's usually some form of sharing, some way to share. Um, on Vimeo, there's a little paper airplane here, share. And it says share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, etc. Or here's the link. So sharing a video on Twitter is usually just pasting in the link or if the network has a handy share button, you do it that way. So I'm going to click share on Twitter. And what pops up is a brand new screen to do a new tweet, and it automatically fills itself in a little bit. That's one of the reasons why you might want to click the share buttons, because they automatically write something for you. Maybe you already have the at name of the person, uh, and it has the link to the video.
sharing a video from YouTube would be the same thing. You could go over to YouTube, and then let's do my company, PMD Interactive. Let's say there's this interesting video. You can hook up the whole end. family for a hundred bucks. That's Get one of the things about Vimeo. Also, no ads. Text and up to 10 gigabytes they of 4G again LTE. are trying to be different than YouTube, so you won't see any ads on, on Vimeo. Um, but anyway, let's say I wanted to share this video. Depending on the network, this one down here, share. Where would you like to share it? Here's the link to the video, or share it on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. Blogger, Reddit, Tumblr, Pinterest, V Contact, uh, LinkedIn, Stumble Upon, that one. <laughs> Save me. Save me. A Russian site. Uh, Live Journal and Dig. So you can share to all of those right here if you're logged in. Or you've always got or you've always got the link. You can copy that link and paste it directly to your tweet. So there are more social networks in the world than just Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. There's social networks of countries that they themselves are hot in their country. Um, like uh, this one, I don't believe I've heard of this one, but I know I've heard of the uh, contact. That one's popular uh, in Russia, and then you've got other ones like um, uh, QQ in China, and Baidu, etc. So you've got global, you've got other social networks. But most websites now with, with media content have some sort of um, share button. But I'll show you this the alternate way. I'm going to select the link back to Twitter, and here I will paste the link. And like Google+, Plus, after you tweet it, it's smart enough to kind of grab a thumbnail and grab a little bit of text and put it on your tweet. Here I'm going to say, uh, create a video on a new app. Add a hashtag. I can do more than one. Uh, like, m more than one link. You know, I could take this I can take this link and, and also put it on there. I think that gets a little cluttered. You should have one topic per tweet, or else you'll, you'll get cluttered. Like, is the purpose of this tweet that video, or is it this blog post? You could put two if they're related, but I still think attention spans and such keep one, uh, keep one topic per tweet. So what should happen then is that the video gets embedded into the tweet. You can play the tweet. Hey everyone, it's time for another episode of Cool Comic Book Covers. Uh, you can play the video in the tweet. Now notice that this relies on that your video is on a third-party service. You cannot upload a video. When we had over here to create a tweet, there's attach a photo, but there's no attach a video. So you should have your videos up on YouTube or Vimeo or what else is there? Uh, Twitch or Justin.tv or Ustream or whatever. You should have your videos up somewhere, and then you've got a mechanism to share that video in your tweet. You've also got a uh, sound, but at the moment, sound really only works if you've got your sound up on SoundCloud. They just activated this very recently. So if you get a free account at SoundCloud, you can upload podcasts, 
you know, interviews, original music, etc., for free, and uh, you can um, you can then attach your tweet. Uh, this is actually very new, so I'm not sure if everyone can do it just yet. But you will be able to, everyone will be able to do it eventually. Uh, I'm going to try it right now, because I, I read about it just like last week. I'm going to go to this song that I made, and I'm going to share it on Twitter. Right here. Notice it automatically adds the link, it adds the text, which you can edit, of course. In this case, it also added my Twitter name there. Depending on the service, I might already do that for you. So that's why it's a good idea to share, you know, from the media. Share the media from the website. You might also then get a pop-up about, would you like to follow SoundCloud or VM Campos? I just realized I have over 18,000 tweets. If I spend too much time on Twitter. Yeah, so now SoundCloud seems to embed it, it seems to be live for everyone. So that's adding some multimedia to your, uh, to your, to your tweets. It's not just limited to text. People think that's a, that's the big limitation about Twitter. Well, it's just 140 characters text. What can I do with it? I, I can't, I can't do what I want with it. You can add links, and those links can go anywhere. You can add pictures, video, and sound content, and that's basically everything you might want to add, right? So I'm creating content, obviously not relevant to what this business is, but um, content that um, will entice people to follow me. Um, what we learned in, in Google Plus will apply here too about interacting with people and hashtags and replying and all of that. But what I want to give you before we wrap up is this, uh, this, this blog post that I wrote. That also talks about a few other things we didn't quite cover, but that's over on my company blog. If you go to this address up here, pmdinteractive.com slash blog, there's a blog post in there with five tips uh, for Twitter. So go there and look at the look at the Twitter post. There's also one on Google Plus. And, um, and, and read those and apply them because you might have put a really nice profile picture, a great biography, started to post great content, but no one knows about you. And one of the ways to be known is to start talking to random strangers. As scary as it sounds, in, in real life, it's not so scary in the digital world. And the benefits of that are that you, get a, that you could get a captive audience, that you could get followers. When you have followers and you start to tweet, they'll pay attention. And then ultimately, it's up to you to decide exactly how you're going to use social media. And for, for my clients, what we do is we, um, we interact with, um, with people. We, we put links. Like I was looking at the Google Analytics recently for a client, and I was seeing that this particular blog post of theirs was getting good traffic. I want to get more traffic for that. So I'll put out a couple of tweets spaced out over a few days or so uh, with an enticing picture and then a link to that blog post. I'll check the analytics in a couple of days or a week or so and see did it, did it work, did it, did it get me more traffic. So this, this is the blog post here. Make it work for you, Twitter. And it's got five tips in there on how to use Twitter effectively.
the last thing that, that I'll show here, uh, on Google Plus I said, remember, you've got a business page and it will show you insights or statistics about how well you're doing on Twitter, uh, on Google Plus. Twitter now has a new feature that's been opened to the public, uh, and it's under, let me see, does it show it here easily, or is it only, yeah, you have to, you have to go to this address. Uh, Twitter, uh, I'm sorry, uh, http colon slash slash analytics.twitter.com. analytics.twitter.com. This is not on by default. Your notifications perhaps are close enough. They'll tell you this tweet got retweeted this amount of times, I got these replies, etc. But analytics, this is the power user stuff. And now everyone can use it. It used to be only that the, that the developers could use it. I remember you know, a couple of years ago, not everyone could get to this. But now you need to turn it on and go through that process. You can do it on your own, and then it'll start to give you much more detail. It'll show you day by day how many f how many views you got on Twitter, how many replies you got on your tweets, how many uh, retweets, um, where are your followers from? I can see the majority of my followers are from Los Angeles. Let's say so analytics. These are the statistics, the insights, all of the data that Twitter is collecting 24 hours a day, you can see what it's saying, saying about you. Yes? Maybe it shows how to create lists. Um, no, that's... Uh, I can show you during lab time. Not everyone really might need it. There's already a lot on our plate to learn about. But uh, I can definitely show you during lab. So here under analytics, This is going to tell me everything that I want to know. Impressions, I tweeted something, the number of times a user saw the tweet, engagement, uh, who actually clicked on it or replied to it or something, and how well the, how high the engagement is, the ratio. I tweet something and people care. How high is that? So this, I really recommend you take advantage of this, turn it on, and simply I clicked on it and it turned it on. In the old days, you had to put a credit card number in. Um, but now you're able to do it here. So take a look at that, and then you'll see how well you're doing. There's still other things that we can talk about, like lists and promoted tweets and such, and there's, there's a lot to really to learn, but I think at this point, three hours of, of an overview on Twitter uh, is, is good. It's up to you to start using it, to see if you like it. There's all of these social networks that you can get into. Uh, I like Twitter for business and personal. Um, the limitation is not a limitation for me. It, it makes me craft a message that is much more effective in 140 characters with a call to action. Click here for the coupon. For personal, well, I love using it like when I'm watching TV because then I can tweet with people that are also watching the exact same show. And you get a lot of followers that way. For business, it's a little bit harder. Uh, but I recommend what sort of live event can you tap into? If I've got Victor's Bakery and there's a hashtag like Cake Wars or something that the, that the uh, Food Network is running, you know, I can, I can go hashtag Cake Wars and as my company start to tweet to people that are tweeting on the same topic because we're all watching the same show. Everyone's engaged at that moment. So for your business, it might be a lot difficult. You know, people tell me, I've got a photography business. What, what, what can I watch? I, say, I, I don't know, maybe like some, something on National Geographic. Because people watch National Geographic perhaps because of the beautiful scenery and photography and videography. And maybe you can tap into that and tweet along with people that are watching, you know, the Travel Channel. Maybe you're a realtor and you're watching Million Dollar Listing. You know, live tweet with people. But you have to find out what's the hashtag. Usually nowadays you're watching just about anything on TV and in the corner, hashtag something. Follow that hashtag and you're going to see everyone tweeting about it. Like one of the shows I was watching uh, yesterday, I should have been in bed, but I was watching uh, Comic Book Men. 
on AMC. Their hashtag is hashtag C CBM. So everyone that was tweeting about that show at that time, I was following along with them, tweeting with people, and I got like seven new followers. Because I'm tweeting to people that care about the same thing. Now it's up to you to decide what's the hashtag, what's the show, what's the topic that you're going to search for, for your business. So take a look at my blog post there and uh, try it out, download the app. When we come back, we'll talk about the next network, and then we'll, uh, we'll see a lot of things that we're doing in all of these networks are very similar, but there's nuances to each of them. Now here's what we need to do. Um, the, the, this is the end of the class at the moment, um, and we'll do a little lab time in a bit.